You've heard of Mead. You might have even seen some Mead in forms of popular media, and maybe you've even tried Mead. But have you ever brewed your own? In this video series, I'm going to be covering all the basics. Things you absolutely need to know to start making your own Mead. My name's Sam from Sam Making Mead, and let's begin, shall we? So here's the thing. You could have the best recipe in the world. You could have all the equipment under the sun. You could even understand different nutrient schedules, but you won't get anywhere if you don't know how to sanitize your equipment properly. Firstly, what is sanitizer? Sanitizer reduces bacteria of, various, of the various surfaces and equipment that come into contact with your meat to safe levels. To do this properly, you need food grade, no rinse sanitizer. I personally recommend Starsan, also known as Kensan to those in the UK. This no rinse sanitizer makes it simple and easy to sanitize your equipment. There are no, uh, there are some powder based no rinse sanitizers out there, but I personally find it so much more convenient to use the sanitizing liquid. Uh, I have experience with both, so just my opinion. Let me show you how to use your sanitizer properly. What you're wanting to do first is to read the uh, label instructions for the sanitizer packaging. It should have somewhere the suggested dilution rate for using a no rinse sanitizer. So be sure to follow the dilution rate. If you're planning to sanitize a fermenting vessel, such as a carboy or bucket, you can use these to make up your sanitizing solution in, which at the same time will sanitize your vessel. Winner! If you're sanitizing a bucket, you can just dump all of your other equipment in um, that you need to sanitize into it, because everything that touches your mead needs to be sanitized. Whatever you use to, um, to mix your ingredients together, like a spoon, um, yep, an auto siphon that you need to take your mead from one vessel to another, uh, like this one here, absolutely, uh, and your hand when you decide to get a taste for yourself, indubitably. Right, that was a joke, please don't touch your mead with your bare hands, bad idea, you will ruin your mead. Just a quick note, must is the same name we use uh, in mead making for the basic mixed ingredients uh, before fermentation starts. So if you hear me call uh, like mead, uh, must, they're the same thing, just at different stages of the process. That's just good to know for your future reference and for online guides as well. Back to sanitizing. Another important thing when sanitizing your equipment is checking the minimum contact time for your sanitizer. Um, it might not be on the packaging, but I tend to go by the guide of one minute, um, and that's the amount of time that your, sanit uh, your equipment needs to be submerged in the sanitized fluid um, for that to kind of effectively sanitize it. Uh, now, emphasis on the minimum. You don't, uh, you know, you can leave it in there for longer. So I personally, when I'm kind of making a lot of things, I have this uh, this pot here and I keep all of my equipment in there um, because then it's not going to be touching anything that might be infected, um, like un, un, you know, unsanitized surfaces and things like that. One more thing to know about using uh, food grade no rinse sanitizer is that it's absolutely fine if a small amount of it remains on the equipment. Now, I'm talking like a few bubbles here, maybe at the bottom of a carboy or a bucket, um, not puddle to it. If you follow the dilution rate, you don't have to make sure your equipment is bone dry before you start using it. Just make sure to give it a really good shake and to get as much of the sanitizer off as possible. The last tip I'm going to give you guys is that once you've sanitized your equipment, you can actually pour some of the sanitized solution into a pre-made spray bottle. Uh, now, I find this is really useful to keep on hand for things like uh, hydrometer readings, which we'll get into in another video. Um, and you can keep this for a few weeks. After that, though, you will need to make up a fresh batch. But to be honest, in that time, you probably need to make a batch anyway, because you're going to be one of uh, wanting to make more meat. Uh, so now you know how to use sanitizer properly. Congratulations, you've taken your first step towards making meat. But there's a few more critical things that you need to know before you start making your first one. So keep watching these videos to find out more. Now my name is Sam from Sam Making Mead and I'll see you in the next video. If you guys have liked this, please do let me know and if you guys have any comments or suggestions of things you want to see on this channel, also let me know in the comments down below. See you guys in the next one.